Hello there. Welcome to the new lecture. After the end of this tutorial, you would be able to design a chiller. So, let's start. All right, now we'll understand how to design a chiller. We'll use this basic equation of conduction here. Q is rate of flow of energy, M is mass flow rate, C is specific heat, and delta T is the change in temperature. It is important to note that M over here represents rate of flow of mass. This equation can be rewritten as rho times V. So mass flow rate is written as density times volume flow rate. So here are the details of each and every term used in the equation. Q is rate of heat transfer which can be measured in joules or British thermal unit. Rho is the density of water. We use the units kg per meter cube and in IP system we use the unit pound per feet cube. V is volumetric flow rate measured in meter cube per second or cubic feet per minute which is the CFM. M is mass flow rate. It is measured in kg per second or pound per minute. Cp is heat capacity. This is measured in joules per kg Kelvin or BTU per pound degree Fahrenheit. And finally delta T which is the temperature change. Generally the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin but over here it is the change of temperature. So either of Kelvin or centigrade can be used in SI system. However, in IP system, degree Fahrenheit is used. It is important to note that wherever temperature is only mentioned, there it is always advisable to use the value in Kelvin. But wherever change of temperature is there, either of Kelvin or degree centigrade can be used. The results won't be affected. Alright, now we'll understand more details related to this equation. If we use this equation in metric units, we know the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube and Cp value of water is 4.19 into 10 to the power 3 joules per kg Kelvin. So once we substitute the value of rho and Cp in the main equation, we get the value as 1000 times volume flow rate times 4.19 into 10 to the power 3 times delta T and since all the values are substituted in SI unit, so the final answer is going to be in watts or joule per second. Okay, now multiplying the constants, we are left with this equation. So if we have the values of volumetric flow rate and temperature difference in SI unit, we can use this direct formula to calculate the value of Q. Okay, now let's discuss how to find this value in IP units. Now this is something very important. So a lot of focus is needed in this section. The density is taken as 62.4 pound per cubic feet for water and the value of Cp for water is 1 BTU per pound degree Fahrenheit. When we substitute these values in the main equation, we are left with this equation which is value of density is 62.4, V is substituted as V, Cp value is 1 and delta T is mentioned as delta T. Now, since we are substituting all the values in IP units, so the final answer of rate of heat transfer will be found in BTU per minute. It is important to note that the unit of V used in this equation is cubic feet per minute. Okay, now if we change this cubic feet per minute to cubic feet per hour, we have to multiply the overall equation by 60. So this will give us the final answer not in BTU per minute, instead in BTU per hour. So if you want the results in BTU per minute, use this equation by substituting the value of V in cubic feet per minute. If you want the answer in BTU per hour, so we can use this equation and substitute the value of V in cubic feet per hour. Alright, now moving forward, if you want the values of V, in GPM or you have the value of V in GPM, you have to use this equation. So here we have multiplied this by the term 0.12 in order to convert cubic feet per hour to GPM. And when you use this equation by substituting the value of V in GPM, the final answer of rate of heat transfer is going to be in BTU per hour. 
This is the most widely used equation because all of the standard ASHRAE tables follow the unit of flow as GPM which is gallons per minute. At this time it is important to pause the screen and analyze these three equations for a few moments. Alright, now moving forward we can convert this BTU per hour into tons. So we have to divide this overall equation by 12,000 and then we can take all these constants 62.4, 60.112 and multiply them and collect at one place. So the equation becomes simpler. Doing further calculation. Now it is important to note that mostly in the industry this value of 449.28 is used as 500. This is done for two reasons. First of all the final equation obtained is much more simpler to deal with. The second reason we can add a value of factor of safety to the above equation. So due to either of these two reasons the second equation is mostly used which will give the result as a slightly over design chiller. But since the equation is simpler and most conveniently used we will follow this equation whenever we are designing chillers. However for most accurate results it is advisable to use the above equation which does not include factor of safety. But the mostly used equation in the industry in SI units is this one and in IP unit is this one. So finally this can be simplified down further as V times delta T upon 24. Over here it is important to note it is very important to note that the value of V has to be substituted in gallons per minute and the final answer will be found in terms of refrigeration. Okay, now let's take a sample problem and design a chiller. Find the chiller capacity required to cool 100 GPM that's 0.0063 meter cube per second water flow from 72 degrees Fahrenheit to 60 degrees Fahrenheit in SI system 295 kelvins to 289 kelvins. Okay. First in metric units we know the formula and in IP units also we know the formula. So we will deal with these two formulas separately. Ok so now on using this formula and substituting the value of volumetric flow rate which is 0 0.0063 and the temperature difference. Here we see the temperature difference 295 to 289 is 6 kelvins. So here we have substituted that value. And on doing simple calculation, the final answer is 158.4 into 10 to the power 3 watts, which can be written in more suitable way as 158.4 kilowatt. So this is the capacity of chiller required in order to cool 0 0.0063 meter cube per second water flow from 295 Kelvin to 289 Kelvin. Okay, now let's solve the same problem in IP units. Here we will use this equation. We have substituted the value of V which has to be substituted in GPM. An important point to note. So that is 100. Ok. Then delta T. Over here the temperature has to be taken in degree Fahrenheit. So it changes from 72 to 60. So the difference is going to be 12. So 100 times 12 upon 24. So the final answer is 50 turns. Now there is an important point to understand. By using these two different equations we are getting values ok the chiller has been designed alright but is 50 ton equal to 158.4 kilowatts? No. It's time for you to pause your screen now and try to analyze for a few moments why is there difference in these two answers. Ok the correct answer to this is in this formula we have considered factor of safety. If you remember the value of 449 has been taken to 500. That's the reason why we are getting a different value in this case and the chiller is slightly over designed. If you use the exact value of 449 then the values obtained from metric calculation and IP calculations is going to be same. So this is the correct explanation to this problem.